Hi, I'm Robert O'Brien from O'Brien Guitars. I'm here with Marshall Brune from Brune Guitars at the Guitar Foundation of America convention in Denver, Colorado. And Marshall has brought some very historic instruments, and I thought I'd ask him about some of the instruments, let him All talk right. to you about them. Marshall, yeah. how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thanks for Fantastic. having me here. Well, tell us about some of the instruments you've brought. All right. Here. Well, uh, we start. Uh, we brought uh, some of our instruments from the, the our collection as well as for sale. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, everything that we have here is for sale. We left a bunch of stuff at home. Uh, we brought out a 1928 Herman Hauser, which is a quintessential guitar. You know, it's the definition of the Hauser style. Sure. And it was built. Of, of, or it was played predominantly by Charlie Bird as his touring guitar. Okay. About 10 years ago, I did a full restoration on this one, which involved removing the back, uh, fixing a bunch of the cracks, patching a hole in the side, and making a new bridge, replacing the fingerboard. Wow. And, you know, a few other small things like that. Sure, sure. Uh, it, it ended up sounding really good after the fact, uh, and after we got the, the lacquer off that somebody had put onto it and whatnot. So uh, we've got that one up for sale, about a cool $80,000. So if somebody wants this guitar and they just have to have it, you'll take a check, right? Oh, absolutely. Fantastic. Check, credit, cash, you name it, I'll take it all. Great. And this is the one that has really, I mean, here at the show, everybody's been coming over and playing this instrument. What have we got here? Yeah, this is an 1888 Antonio Torres. Uh, this is a uh, number 124. Uh, and if you remember correctly, the uh, Targa Torres is number 114 from 1888. So this is 10 away. Uh, he probably made about 12 guitars that year because I know of at least one after and one before right. uh, on each side, conversely. Uh, this one, we just finished up a year and a half long restoration on this, uh, yet we managed to keep all the original finish okay. where we didn't cut into anything. Right. Uh, what we did was, again, the back had to come off because it had shrunk about uh, about three-eighths of an inch on wow. both sides. holy cow. Yeah, so it's, it shrunk a whole bunch, so we ended up putting in a new center strip up the back. Right. In fact, we can bring it on down. Folks, this bird's eye maple is just off the charts. Incredible yeah. looking. Wood like this doesn't grow on trees anywhere. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so you put the center strip yeah. in because of the shrinkage. Yeah, we. this is about a little bit over three times as wide as the original one okay. in order to maintain the original perimeter. Right. Uh, we had the back and obviously in two pieces mm -hmm. to get it to relax out because it had, it had cupped so much in the opposite wow. direction. Wow. While we were on the inside, we, we redid uh, and fixed several of the cracks that were running along the fingerboard and causing structural issues there. Right. But that it has been completely fixed and it's 100% structurally sound. Wow. Uh, we have also re-inlaid the cracks that had been previously done and that they were starting to heave. Mm -hmm. So we were able to take care of that. Right. Uh, in the process of doing several of the, the splints on this, the somebody you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago, right. cut straight through the brace. So we had to replace the brace wow. because, of, you know, the wasn't uh, good. Sure, sure. And so we put a new fingerboard on this one because it also did not have the original fingerboard. Right. So we figured we'd actually make it playable. Right, right. And uh, this one has turned out to be probably the best sounding Taurus I've ever heard. And I, heard I, I, I can testify to that because... I mean, this is crazy, folks. There's a lot of people here at the show. Anybody that comes over and says, here, you want to play the Taurus? And, 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 I mean, I've played it, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, I mean, we, we are encouraging everybody here to play these guitars. And it's not like we're saying, no, 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 you, know, you can't play this. Yeah. No, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for anybody to play just one of these, let alone all three. Right. Because... You know, these just don't exist in the same place exactly. that often, yeah. unless you're at my shop. <laughs> how, how long does it take to do a restoration to this extent that you did on this guitar? This one was about a year and a half. Okay. Uh, it wasn't nonstop work, right. but, you know, you have to be in the right headspace right, to right. do what you need to do, because you can't have anything else on your mind. Right. That said, it was uh, the vast majority of that year. Wow. And if one of our viewers wants to take this guitar home, what are we asking for this? Uh, this one, we've got it at the show special for $235,000. Show special, folks. Own a piece of history for $235,000. Own the finest tortoise ever made. It's very Still nice. Still surviving. Very nice. All right. And he has one other historical instrument here. Yep. The last instrument that we have is a 1971 Robert Boucher. Wow. Which, uh, this one we were uh, happy to sell here at the convention. Uh -huh. uh, this one is a uh, the quintessential Boucher, great condition. Actually, I take that back, not great condition. It it's, is now. It is new. Right. It is new. I have done nothing to it. Wow. When, I, when we bought this, uh -huh. 
it had all we did was we changed the strings and buff the frets. Wow. You never see a boucher in, in perfect this condition. Yeah, condition. it is it is perfect condition. It really and is. So and beautiful guitar. And it's sold. It's sold. And the lucky owner is taking this home for how much? Hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Hundred and twenty five thousand. And a real deal. Yeah. A piece and of history. Truly a, a boucher like this, uh, you know, this clean, which is essentially non existent right. aside from this one. Uh, sells for typically about one hundred and fifty to one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Wow! So this really was a, a deal for the guitar. Yeah. Now the people that buy these instruments, do they put them on the wall and collect them, or do they play them? For the most part, they're played. They're played. They're played the yeah. way it should be. Yeah. Uh, most of our clients buy a guitar on sound mm -hmm. and playability first. Right. After sound and playability. Then they think, well, is this a good example of this maker or not? Wow. So, you know, they want a Hauser, then they're going to get a Hauser, mm -hmm. and they typically come to us because we set it up right and right. make them play like butter. Very interesting. Wow. And you also have some other instruments? I, I do, some yes. these are Some of these are your personal instruments? Yeah, yeah. I've got three of my own, or actually four of my own guitars right. uh, that I brought out to the show. Right. And, uh, you know, I've got my... This is my legacy model, mm -hmm. uh, which is based relatively close to my father's bracing pattern. I, I figure I should at least tip my cap to him. And Absolutely. Since he's given me so much work and help throughout the years sure. to get to where I am. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, I have modified that bracing pattern a little bit to fit my personal taste. Sure, of course. Uh, the next guitar that I have is my Grand Concert. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a bracing pattern that I've developed. It's a really bold, powerful, strong sounding guitar, but still has a lot of color, right. a lot of volume and it has a great vocal range so it can be quiet it's not a guitar that always shouts to shout sure and uh i also have my performers uh, series okay or bracing pattern mm -hmm. and my performance bracing pattern is something that uh is a nice mix in between the two this one is a very sweet guitar this is a little bit on the brash side mm -hmm. this is a great ensemble guitar right. you know, goes great with other instruments right. goes great with other guitars it blends really well yet it has enough power to take a solo line when needed but also has the expressional range to come back nice. uh, I also have one of my own guitars this is one that really caught my eye folks look at this bird's eye maple flame maple yep. highly figured with what's the wood in the middle Madagascar rosewood Madagascar rosewood sandwich typical Torres Yep, type thing? I, uh, this is my homage to the greats. Beautiful. Uh, this is a 36 Fleta body style that, uh, okay. based off of the 36 Fleta that we had in our shop. Right. And uh, this is this 36 Fleta was Fleta's homage to Torres. Okay. So it's my homage to Fleta's homage to, to Torres. Torres. Right. And well, you did a fantastic job. Uh, thank you. Very, very beautiful. And then all the proportionality I took from a Torres that we had through our shop that mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have in for restoration in a few weeks now. Right. And uh, it's uh, the sides on this are point eight millimeters thick very very thin yeah, yeah. and, and long, the top i think you also told me it was very thin uh, the top is uh, moderately thin it's okay. uh, about 2.2 millimeters okay. 2.3 millimeters right. it has my grand concert bracing pattern uh -huh. but because this is such a smaller body right. it, it still has a very powerful sound but this one is a very sweet sounding guitar right. as well uh, fantastic on the, head, on the head uh -huh. i have a hauser or uh, the torres headstock oh, so i yeah, built look at a that. torres into my guitar. I see that. That's fantastic. And uh, it's got a, a Hauser rosette because, you know, I, I've learned so much from working on Hausers. Right. Uh, primarily this one, which I did, you know, with the, the restoration. Right, one. right. You know, that is just beautiful work, folks. You don't see craftsmanship very often like this. Beautiful work. Well, thank you. Well, you know, on behalf of all the luthiers here at the show, there's quite a few of us, I want to thank Marshall and his, and his father Richard for, for bringing this history to us. Um, here at the show and now through the through the magic of the internet other people are going to be able to benefit yep. from this so thank you very much for doing that thank you Robbie if you're ever in Chicago folks drop by the Brene workshop uh, you're, it's a step back in time a lot of collection a lot of history uh, a lot of things going on there so if you're ever in Chicago drop by and look them up yep. all are welcome come on by if it's got strings on it you can play it alright thank you very much Marshall thank you Robbie alright take care take it easy